Hello and welcome to another Revit tutorial. In this video we're going to be covering the top 10 beginner tips for getting started with Enscape for Revit. Let's get started. Starting things off with number 10, a very simple tip but often overlooked. If you click on your Enscape settings, on this window you'll see each one of the sliders and controls that you have, and to the right there's a small question mark. If you hover over that, Enscape will provide a quick description of what that control does and how it affects your view in Enscape. So a very simple quick tip but very useful to know. Number 9 is another simple tip and that is just to reduce your window size. If you're noticing a lot of choppiness in your scene or stuttering with the rendering, you can just make your window smaller and continue moving through the view and you'll experience a much smoother movement. Number eight is simply becoming familiar with all of the controls in Enscape before you start your presentations. A lot of times your view will start off in fly mode, which can be disorienting to people who are using the model, could cause you to fly into walls like this. Um, a quick fix to getting back to your initial starting view is pressing page up or page down on your keyboard and it will immediately throw you back into that view. Another helpful tool is pressing M on your keyboard, which will toggle your map display in the upper left-hand corner there. A great resource for understanding all of the controls that are available for Enscape is at Enscape's knowledge base on their website. Uh, simply find Enscape keyboard shortcuts, and it'll give you all of the controls that you can have while you're in the Enscape 3D viewer. Number seven is an excellent tool for creating and organizing your views in Enscape. If you are navigating your model and you find a particular view that you like and you want to save that in your Revit environment, simply go to your Enscape tab at the top, click Create View, and you can type in any name that you want for that view. When you click OK, it's going to add that view to your list of 3D views right there. Number six is a new feature that came with Enscape version 2.1.3, and that is creating favorited views. So if you look at the view dropdown on your Enscape tab, you'll notice that there's a star that you can check by each one of your views. And if you use this tool, what it does, let's go back to Enscape, you'll notice that on the right side of your window, you have a little tab. If you hover over that, you'll be able to select each view that you've favorited and by clicking on them, it will jump your camera directly over to that view. Alternatively, you can press page up, page down on your keyboard. And one of the coolest features about this is that when you export a standalone file, all of those saved views come with it. So your client or whoever you're sharing this project with will be able to go and select each still view off of that project and they'll still be able to move around uh, from that spot. Number five is using Entourage to provide a better sense of scale. Oftentimes, if you're looking at an empty room or if you're looking at a design in plan, it looks like you have plenty of space. But if you drop scale figures in, you may notice that you don't quite have the space that you initially thought you did. So a simple RPC Revit family can go a long way in communicating the actual scale of a space in Revit. Number four is using a 3D grass texture with your site work. Let's go to Revit and let's check out how we can get this accomplished. Right now we're seeing a grass image, but it's still pretty flat throughout the site. So if we go back to Revit, open your manage materials first and check the material that you're using for your grass. Right now this one's called topography site. I want to rename that one so that it includes the word grass in the name. That's crucial for this to work. And then simply go to your Enscape tab, go to Settings, and go to Advanced. Make sure that Grass Rendering is checked. With that checked, go back to Enscape, and now any materials that you're seeing with the word grass in them will show up as a 3D grass texture. This can be a great tool for enhancing the quality of your renderings and just providing that next level of detail. You will want to exercise caution when using the 3D grass texture because sometimes it can lead to results like this. Um, when I first saw this, I was my mind was blown. Uh, I was trying to think of why this chair was showing up as grass. But if we take a look in Revit, 
pick that chair, and we look at the material, the material was named dune grass by default. So Enscape will pick up on any material that has the word grass in it. If I just swap that out for, let's see, chair material, that should fix it. And then that chair that I was looking at should revert back to just its natural texture. So always double check all of your materials so that only the ones that you want to show up with the grass texture have the word grass in their material name. Number three, creating a test box. This is useful for testing out Revit families before you bring them into your main project. So essentially what you can do is just create a small room that's fully enclosed and when you place objects in it, all of the exterior light is shut out. It's really good for testing lighting fixtures and other components. Also, it's good for testing materials on your objects before you bring them into your main model for rendering. So here we've got a simple box, dropped a ceiling in. We're trying to see if our 2x4 fixtures are actually casting light. This pendant is not, but for some reason this sink is. So. You can see how, it's, how it can be useful for testing your families before you bring them into your main project. Good way of keeping your file size down on your main project instead of bringing in a whole bunch of broken families. Number two, you can use a section box in Revit, which is found on your properties panel right here, to easily cut down the size of your model. Save that view. I have one here. And what this does is it reduces the amount of 3D points that Enscape has to render while you're in a view. So using a section box to cut a chunk of your model out that you specifically want to navigate to is a good way of speeding up your overall workflow. And for the number one tip for Enscape 3D, that is of course to check out Enscape3D.com. This is your best site and source for any Enscape 3D information. You can start a free trial here. They have a wonderful gallery of amazing projects that have been rendered with Enscape 3D. And also they have additional video tutorials here that explain the ins and outs of using Enscape. They have their own tips and tricks here. Definitely check them out. Um, another really valuable resource that they have on their website is the blog that has articles written by experts that explain really good practices to use while you're in Enscape, regardless of whether you're in Revit, Rhino, SketchUp, the best place to get your information. So that's pretty much it. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up icon at the bottom. If you have any tips or tricks of your own that you'd like to share, please feel free to share those tips in the comments and I'll try and include them in a future video. If you'd like to be notified as soon as the next videos come out, hit that subscribe icon. I'm planning on doing some intermediate tips and tricks and some advanced tips and tricks in my next couple of videos. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.